So maybe you've done a few hyperbaric sessions and you don't feel anything happening yet. Is hyperbaric working for you or not? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. If you've seen me speak or you've watched this channel for some period of time, you'll know that I frequently say that not only is hyperbaric not the cure for everything, I actually believe that hyperbaric is not the cure for anything. Obviously, I feel very strongly and the research supports the fact that it does help so many different people with so many different conditions. My worst nightmare, however, is having somebody walking around saying, I tried hyperbaric and it didn't work. And that's not because I think that it literally will help everybody, but it is because when I hear a statement like that, if I have the opportunity to probe a little bit, it typically turns out that their protocol that they were following wasn't the right one for whatever their goals happened to be, or they just generally didn't do enough sessions to actually get the result that they were hoping for. So believe it or not, there's quite a bit of information built into that one concept. First, we have to talk about the variables around a hyperbaric protocol. You have three variables. You have what pressure are we using? What percentage of oxygen are you breathing? And then time. And as far as time goes, we're talking frequency and duration. How often are you having your sessions and how long are the sessions when you have them? I bring that up because in order to have success with hyperbaric, we have to match all three of those variables to whatever your health concerns are or whatever your health goals happen to be. Otherwise, you may be receiving hyperbaric oxygen therapy sessions, but you'll never get the benefits that you're actually looking for. So when it comes to those benefits, there are what I consider to be short-term goals and long-term goals. Short-term goals happen relatively quickly. In the first three to five sessions, we could start seeing some of those come to the surface. Long-term goals are really 20 hours, 30, 40, 50, 60 hours, or even more. So for that reason alone, Knowing what your goals are and matching the right protocol is really important if you want to get the full value of your experience. Short-term goals are things like improved cellular energy. Often people see improvements in heart rate variability or improvements in their sleep. Another benefit that starts relatively early but continues as you continue your sessions is increased immune system activation to fight infections more effectively, as well as decreases in inflammation. Long-term goals include things like angiogenesis, rebuilding of your vasculature and capillary system for improved gas exchange, growth factors and stem cells for the repair and regeneration of tissue, further inflammation reduction or immune system balancing, further improvements in your immune system's ability to fight infection, mitochondrial adaptations for improved cellular energy production, neurogenesis, the healing, recovery, and repair of neurons, DNA and epigenetic repair, literally repairing your epigenome and damages to your DNA. Those are long-term benefits. So quite often when somebody says, I tried hyperbaric and it didn't work, one of my first questions would be, what were you hoping would happen? And what protocol did you follow? Let's make sure that those were even a match in the first place. And unfortunately, many times there's a mismatch between the protocol somebody was following and the goals that they were trying to reach. Next, it's important to just understand that hyperbaric is delivering an increased amount of oxygen. By itself, the oxygen molecule will do nothing in your body. Your cells need to take that oxygen in and then use that oxygen as part of a fuel system to stimulate the repair mechanisms and the regeneration mechanisms inside of our body. And I say that just to say that there's a delay for everybody between the time you start your therapy and the time that those cellular changes are starting to happen. A lot of those cellular changes you may not even feel like Increased cellular energy may show up as increased energy for your body or your mind, but in many cases, it's increased energy for healing and recovery, which while your cells are getting energy for that healing process, we don't perceive it as increased energy in our life. And then there's another delay between the time that these cellular changes are occurring and that they show up in your life symptomatically or from a performance standpoint. So first, this oxygen needs to go into your system and not just once, but repetitively to show your body that it's going to be having access to increased levels of oxygen over a period of time. As you drive that oxygen into your cell over a period of weeks, these cellular repair mechanisms start to kick off. Once you get enough repair, then you start to see those changes in your body, in your life, in your health, or in your ability to perform. So there's this delay between the onset of your therapy and in most cases, what health goals you are hoping to achieve. There's also a delay between the time you stop the therapy and the peak of what benefits you're going to get. In other words, the delay in the beginning is because we're starting momentum and we're starting to create these cellular changes. 
the delay when you stop your therapy, you've already created all of this momentum. Just because you pulled the oxygen away doesn't mean those benefits immediately cease to continue. You will still get a few weeks at least of increased improvement before you reach whatever peak of improvement you're going to receive. So it's important to understand both sides of that equation. Clinically, we've known this for decades, but more and more research, especially in the last three to five years, including the research that I recently finished, really illustrates the fact that it takes 10 or 15 or 20 sessions to start creating those changes. And if you want more information about some of that research, you can click here to a series of videos that we did discussing all the findings that we found in the research that I finished. We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work, why does it work, why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps, and how do we use it appropriately and use it safely. And so if you're interested in that, we're gonna add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. The next critical component is really about frequency and duration. If somebody said to me, I'm going to do 12 hyperbaric sessions in my entire life. Should I come once a month for a year or should I come every day for 12 days? I would tell them to come every day for 12 days. And while that's still probably not as meaningful as I would want it to be, it's the cumulative effect of raising the oxygen levels, maintaining elevated oxygen levels for a series of time that really stimulates a lot of the changes that we're looking for. So I hear people say, I did 10 hours, I did 20 hours, I did 40 hours of hyperbaric. And I still really just didn't see the benefit. But when I ask about frequency and duration, they were going once a week, twice a month. Their consistency of that frequency just wasn't intense enough to really wake up the physiological changes that they were looking to achieve. Often people call us and they're looking for a maintenance program. They just, they want to do hyperbaric for wellness and they just want to come once a month or twice a month or once a quarter for a little oxygen boost. And I tell them while any session has some benefit, depending on what you're trying to achieve, if you don't do some series of therapies over a period of time, you're really never going to get the benefits that you think you're going to get by spacing those sessions out so far. In fact, even in our clinics, if somebody wants hyperbaric oxygen, but their frequency really dictates the fact that they need four or five hours or, or more a week, and they're only really able to come once a week and maybe occasionally twice a week, I actually tell them to wait and look for an opportunity where they have a period of time where they could put a series of sessions in close proximity to one another so that they could actually reach the cumulative benefit that we know is necessary to reach a lot of those benefits. Once somebody gets through that initial protocol, whatever it happens to be based on whatever their health goals or concerns are, it may very well be appropriate to do more of a maintenance type of protocol for their next round or two, which may be once a week or once a month. But if we never get that initial phase where we create those changes and stimulate that healing and regeneration, then that maintenance protocol really just won't do much for them. Another conversation that I like to have with people who say, I tried hyperbaric and it just didn't work for me, is what were you hoping was going to happen? And has really nothing changed or the specific things you were looking for just haven't changed yet? And I bring that up because oftentimes patients have a list of five or six things that they're hoping hyperbaric will do for them. And it very well may. But we don't really get to choose which one is first, which one is second, or that I want the most important one first or the least important one last. The mechanisms of action of hyperbaric are essentially universal. When you put a human inside of a chamber and you do a certain pressure over a certain period of time with a certain frequency and duration, there are cellular changes that literally happen for everyone. But again, how that shows up in your life, in your symptoms, in your overall quality or ability to do activities of daily living is where a lot of the variation lives. So if we're starting a protocol and there are certain little signs of change, like I said earlier, well, I am sleeping a little bit better. Well, I do have more energy. Well, actually, I haven't gotten sick in months that I started this therapy or I'm noticing a lot more mental clarity. However, my neuropathy still hasn't healed yet or... However, I still don't have full use of my left leg yet, or I'm still having a lot of pain in my joints associated with this autoimmune disease that I have. What I typically say in these cases is if there's little hints of healing and recovery and regeneration, then we're on the right track. And if we hold the course a little bit longer, it's very likely that we will start to see some of these other benefits break through. But if of course there's literally no changes at all, which is very rare, but does happen, then 
we're not here to waste anybody's time or anybody's money. So if there's literally no changes, it may not be the right therapy for you. So that is possible. But all too often, as I started this conversation, if we really assess the pressure, the oxygen, the frequency and duration, and we really dig a little deeper into, is really nothing changing or are we just not getting the changes we were hoping for yet? we could really start to uncover a bigger conversation around making sure the frequency and duration is optimized for your goals and really managing even the small changes inside of your body to understand if you're starting to show signs of healing and recovery, even if it isn't the ones you're hoping for yet. So is hyperbaric the cure for everything or anything? In my opinion, not at all. Does it help with an overwhelming amount of different conditions that people are suffering with? Absolutely. Does it improve performance both physically and mentally? It certainly seems to. But if you've started to use it and you're not getting the results that you're looking for, my general advice would be stick with it a little longer and or just make sure that the protocol you're following is appropriate for the goals that you have in mind. Hopefully that's helpful in answering that question and we'll see you on the next video. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath, or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.